So I created this video to explain how to use ChatGPT as assistant for development. We have an application. The server was built here by my group at UCR. Client is an iPhone app that was built by another group. I received many requests to create a web interface for this server. So we want to see how we can use ChatGPT to develop for us. So I'm starting completely from scratch or I'm not using ChatGPT to get help with a specific code snippet, but it's more like just letting it do the entire development. And I haven't tried this before. I mean, I tried it with other applications, but for this specific application, it's it's new. I don't have a set of prompts that I have prepared already to show how to do that. I'm just gonna do this with you and see how this will work out. So we don't have to worry about the backend development. The API is, is in place. So we already have a, a decent API documentation that we will share with ChatGPT to build the application for us. Uh, to show you how the application looks like, it's an agricultural application where you can see all the farmlands. You can zoom in to see any specific farmland. You can click on any of them to run soil statistics. You can choose any depth you want and then which soil product you are interested in. And then for this specific region that you selected, you get the minimum, maximum, median, or some statistics about it. You can also draw a custom region and then query this data as well. So you want to replicate all of this using a web application to the limit reasonable to do with a web application. Uh, I typically give these tasks to my students, either undergraduate students or master students. Say a typical student would take maybe a quarter, like 10 weeks, to do a project like that. Uh, this includes the learning time. Learn about the project that we have. They'll have to set up the server themselves. During these 10 weeks, I typically meet my students 30 minutes a week. So my involvement in this project is, I'd say, at least five hours. So now let's see if ChatGPT can cut down these five hours to less than that. Let's first take a look at the final product to get an idea of what we want to accomplish. We have a big map and a list of farmlands to choose from. Once we choose a farmland dataset, it is visualized on the map and the user can navigate to any region to update the visualization. Once you zoom in to see individual farmlands, the user can choose soil depth and soil layer they would like to query. Then you can draw the region of interest on the map and click Run Soil Query. You will get two results. First, you will see a soil map of the selected layer in depth with the color interpretation indicated on the left. Second, you see a box and whisker plot that indicates the median, lower quantile, upper quantile, min, and max values. There is another way to query the data. Let's navigate to a different location and click Query All Farmlands in View. In this case, it runs the query on each farmland in the current view and color code them based on the value. The legend is also updated to reflect the result. Now let's start the actual application development. I'll have this stopwatch running on the side so you can keep track of the time spent when I shorten the video. I'll use plain chat GPT-4 with no plugins, but you can try your favorite tool in a similar way. Throughout this video, I will highlight three advices when using chat GPT, four mistakes that chat GPT made, and one part where it impressed me. I'll start with a simple prompt to create the initial skeleton of the project. I indicated that I want to build a single-page HTML application with React and open layers. I also indicated that I will not use NPM just because I'm not used to it. The first advice is to have some idea of what you want to build, so I don't recommend this method for someone who is not familiar with development. The result of this part is three files that I will host on the web server. While testing, I'll use a private browsing window so I can easily refresh the app without worrying about any cached files at the browser. You can see the result of this initial application. The first feature to implement is to provide a list of farmland datasets to choose from, and when one is selected it will be displayed on the interactive map. For this part, I first give a very simple prompt, followed by the API documentation of the relevant endpoints. Since we use React, most of the code will be within the app.js file. I reloaded the page and I noticed that it didn't work. With quick inspection of the result, I found that the code is trying to use the production server while I'm running it locally, so I adjusted the code to allow it to easily switch between development and production. Now it works correctly. It loads the list of datasets when the page first opens, and when the user selects a dataset, it is displayed correctly on the map. However, I noticed that when I select a different dataset, it keeps both datasets. 
but I wanted it to visualize only the selected dataset. My second advice is to copy and paste any code that you modify back to ChatGPT to make sure it builds on the updated code. I initially copy-pasted the new generated code and it didn't work. From this point, you need to be a bit careful about the generated result. ChatGPT tends to limit the result size, so it often generates only the modified parts and adds some comments on where to place them. My third advice is to carefully merge the generated code with the existing one to avoid removing some functioning parts. Once the code is merged correctly, it worked as needed. In the next part, I wanted to allow the user to draw a polygon on the map that I will later use as the query polygon. This part took a bit longer than expected. The initial result looked good because OpenLayers has a built-in functionality for drawing polygons. However, there were a couple of issues such as the polygon disappearing after drawing, and the map sticking to the mouse before or after drawing the polygon. It took me a couple of minutes to fix this issue and ChatGPT failed to fix the issue. I couldn't easily find a fix with a quick online search. I had to fix it myself and provide the updated code to ChatGPT to continue on. I consider this the first mistake of ChatGPT for this project. Now as the polygon is drawn correctly, I'll move on to the next step, which is to use it to run the query. First, I'll copy-paste my entire code after fixing the polygon drawing issue. Then I'll include my prompt of what feature I want to add. And finally, the API documentation of the relevant endpoints. After carefully merging the new code with the existing one, I found that the results are quite good for a first shot. It displayed the query parameters correctly and it ran the query and showed the result. The result is plain JSON text, which is okay for testing at this point. I noticed that the generated code doesn't list all the depths and soil layers so, so I asked it to complete that part. It's a simple change that I could do myself, but it's easier to do this way. Of course, the text representation of the result is only good for debugging, but it looks ugly. So I asked it to generate a box and whisker plot based on the results. I expected it to use some existing library, but it generated code that uses built-in SVG drawing capabilities, which is fine. Initially, most of the plot was out of the screen, so I followed up with another prompt to make sure that the result is within the screen. The code didn't work right away since I repeated the same mistake of copying and pasting the entire function instead of merging the changes. Once the code worked, I noticed that it writes labels on the plot without displaying the numbers. I asked it to change that to add the numbers, but it replaced the labels with the numbers instead of keeping both. At this point, it's probably easier to make the fix myself, so I decided to let it go as is. Another issue that I only noticed later is that the box and whisker plot requires the lower and upper quantiles which are not provided by the API. Ideally, ChatGPT should notify me about this issue. Instead, it tried to fit whatever data is available to draw something that looks like a box and whisker plot. I consider this the second mistake that it did in this video. At this point, we're about 45 minutes in, and we have a reasonable prototype, which I think is a very good result. The user can navigate the farmland datasets on the map, run some queries, and get the results in a graphical form. The next functionality I would like to add is to query all visible farmlands on the map. In this case, instead of manually drawing a polygon, you want to use all visible farmlands on the map as query polygons. Furthermore, I would like to color code the polygons based on the average value of the query results. This part is a little bit complex because it requires two separate API calls, one to retrieve the farmland polygons, and the other to retrieve all the query answers of all polygons. Then the results of the two calls need to be joined in the browser to display the final answer. So this feature is a good test for ChatGPT. It generated some code, but it did not work immediately. The reason is that ChatGPT included a non-implemented function and wrote a comment to implement this function based on my requirement. When I shared the error with ChatGPT, it provided a sample implementation, but it was not what I wanted. So I followed up with a more detailed prompt to map values to colors, using a linear gradient from the minimum to the maximum values of all polygons. 
This is a two-step process that first needs to scan all results to compute the global minimum and maximum, and then use these values to map values to colors. This part took a little bit of time of going back and forth with ChatGPT. The errors were related to the way it parses the results and converts them to open layer feature objects that can be used with the map. Now it works as expected and styles the polygons based on the results. Next, I wanted to add a legend on the left that highlights the mapping of colors to values. Initially, it looked okay, but it displayed seven colors while I wanted five, and it indicated a single value for each color instead of a range. So I followed up with another prompt to fix this. The next feature I wanted to add is for the single polygon query. In addition to the box and whisker plot, I wanted to plot an image of how the soil map looks like in the query polygon. This requires an additional API call to retrieve the image and add it to the map. The initial implementation didn't work. The code was using four variable to define a box to place the generated image on the map. However, it never calculated that box in the first place. When I signaled this issue, it used the map extents as the box, which is incorrect. I followed up with another prompt to use the minimum bounding rectangle MBR of the query polygon instead. That part fixed the issue of getting the query parameters correctly, but it still didn't work. The issue here is that the API call expects the query polygon to be part of the body of the request, while ChatGPT assumed that it takes a bounding box in the URL. This is the third failure for ChatGPT in this video, since it simply didn't follow the given API and decided to make up a simpler one to use. In fact, this is not a simple fix. Since Open Layers expects a URL for the image to display on the map, while the API expects the query polygon to be part of the body and not the URL. Interestingly, ChatGPT was able to fix this issue by breaking it down in two steps. First, it make a proper call to retrieve the image as a binary object or blob. Then it uses this blob to create a URL that can be given to Open Layers. I have to say that I was impressed by the solution since it's not a common use case that you would find online, so ChatGPT had to bring a few pieces together to come up with this solution. The code worked at that point and displayed an image of the result. However, I noticed an issue that only the first query would work and subsequent queries would fail. The reason is that the code that GPT generated had a separate logic for the first query that also creates the image layer and subsequent queries that use the existing layer. This is generally considered a bad programming practice and it resulted in me fixing one case and leaving the other unfixed. I'll refactor the code later to address this issue, but for now I'll just apply the fix to both parts. Now it works correctly with multiple queries. Next step, I wanted to generate a legend similar to the ones I used earlier to map colors to values. That part went very smoothly since I already had the minimum and maximum from the query result, and I just needed to call the existing function to draw the legend. At this point, I had all the functionality I needed. I just wanted to clean up the code a little. Remembers the issue that I had a few times earlier where reusing a map layer would cause a problem. I decided it's time to refactor the code to avoid this issue. I copy-pasted the entire code to chat GPT to account for all the recent changes, and I asked it to refactor it so that all map layers are created with map initialization, and later in the code, we just changed their contents when needed. Since this was a big refactor, chat GPT had some minor mistakes, such as using a variable without declaring it, but this was an easy fix. This is the fourth and last mistake that I would like to report in this video. If you're doing a big refactor, be careful that the new code is complete and correct. Now the code is complete almost at the two hour mark. I tested all the functionality again after the refactor. Everything seems to be working correctly. The next part was done off the clock since it was not related to the main functionality. This included added a logo and adjusting the style a little bit. Here are a few notes on this part. If your logo contains text, ChatGPT will mess this up. It's much better than some earlier versions, but it would still contain typos. It couldn't generate an image with a transparent background, so I had to add the transparency in an image software offline. When I wanted to update the HTML code and the style, ChatGPT wanted to embed the style in the HTML code, 
so I had to remind it to separate it into a style file. Also, it was not very good with styling, even when I'm very clear of what I want to do. I suggest using it only at the minimum level to make very small changes, but don't rely on it to do a major styling for your page. To conclude, we've showed how to use ChatGPT as a development assistant to build a complete application from scratch. There were some issues that required manual intervention, but the final result is excellent for the relatively short time spent in the development without major prior planning for the development. If you're planning to use an AI assistant for your next development project, feel free to leave a comment down with the tool that you plan to use or the project you will build using it.